Hey, what's going on everybody? Justin here, and in this video we're going to be doing a quick book review of S.C. Gwynn's Hymns of the Republic, the story of the final year of the Civil War. And part of the reason it's going to be a short review is I can't breathe for whatever reason uh, for in this <laughs> tonight. Uh, I think it's like allergies or something, but um, yeah, you can probably just like tell from my voice it's just not good. But I'm trying to be more consistent with my videos because, you know, if this would have happened a week ago or two weeks ago or three weeks ago, I would have just been, oh, yeah, I can't really talk very good. Let's put off videos for like a week or two. So, yeah, I'm definitely trying to keep a more consistent schedule of every, a video every two or three days, something like that. So, not going to let that stop me here. So, let's just get on with the review of Hymns of the Republic. Um, normally, oh, I will say too, I was sent this uh, book by a marketing agency, but um, this is obviously still going to be a, an honest and unbiased review, like always. Um, now, even though I'm a big history person, as you guys probably know, if you follow the channel, if you don't, have to see. This might be my fantasy section, my nice book that you see, but I got like two shelves over there, which are pretty much all like floor to ceiling, it's just all history. Um, however, Civil War and American hi American history and like the Civil War in particular are not my forte. I don't even I, th I want to say this is my only Civil War book actually in my entire library now. So my American history section is already really small. Um, but I did say at the beginning of the year I wanted to branch out and start reading a little bit more um, different eras and topics in history. And part of that obviously is going to be reading and studying and learning more about uh, just sort of modern and American history uh, in general. So that's kind of why I, I agreed to do um, S.E. Gwynn's Hymns of the Republic. Plus when I saw that he was a, he was shortlisted for the Pulitzer Prize uh, for one of his other books, um, Empire of the Summer Moon. Um, and he also was pretty uh, well known for another uh, Civil War book that he wrote uh, right before this one, which was sort of a biography on Stonewall Jackson. I was like, yeah, this he seems like a pretty, pretty real deal. I'll give it a shot. So yeah, I went over and read Hymns of the Republic, and it held my attention, which is definitely a good thing, uh, just because, like I said, Civil War history, I know there are a lot of, like, Civil War buffs, especially in the United States and stuff, but it's just really not my thing, I guess. So a book that, you know, like I said, just held my attention pretty much all the way through. There wasn't ever a time where I was, like, just completely slumped reading it and uh, didn't really want to pick it up. Uh, so that's definitely a good thing just to start things off. Uh, but like usual, I'm going to start with sort of my critique, my criticisms, critiques, whatever, and kind of move on to the good stuff because I like to end on the high notes. Uh, so let's just start with some of the, I guess, not so great stuff. Um, the main, I see, the main problem I had with the book was largely the way it was structured. Um, now this is not a, um, it's not a just a military narrative of the Civil War, which is really good because I'm not really big into kind of, you know, blow for blow, like, tactics and strategies of just, like, armies fighting and stuff. Um, this book deals largely, like, um, as the subtitle says, the final year of the Civil War, so roughly, you know, halfway through 1864, through the end of uh, the Civil, well, the majority of the Civil War in 1865, is what the main thrust of the book is about. However, like I said, it's not a military, like, tactical book I don't, I don't know what the, the the name of the genre is like where you know it's just like a military narrative um but anyways that's definitely part of the book um but i would say roughly it's definitely less than half maybe like a third in between a third and a half of the book is kind of sort of you know the political military narrative and the rest are sort of um more or less political no not political what sort of like vignettes like kind of mini biographies and just kind of uh vignettes looking at different um, kind of social things going on during the Civil War. Uh, but anyways, back to the structure critique. Uh, partly because it's not a blow-for-blow blow narrative of the of the war, and it's not really, but it does include a lot of it, I guess. Uh, like, you have, like, two chapters kind of detailing, like, a certain campaign or something, then you'll just move on to something totally not military, like, related at all. Like, maybe just, for example, just, you know, a history of, like, Confederate spies going to, like, Canada the United States trying to like you know stir up trouble and rebellions and, and things kind of in the north um, so it kind of chronologically some of those chapters kind of take place you know the whole you know year that the book is sort of uh, kind of covering so it, it feels kind of weird kind of jumping back and forth in a way uh, just because it's such a short it's I say a short time period I mean it's still a year but going back from like you know like you know the mid 1864 to reading a chapter 1864 through 65 it's kind of 
this is kind of odd um and then just some of the way some of them are structured like i said they're kind of almost like biographical vignettes so you have sort of a look at this person's sort of career uh which actually in a way i did like probably get back to that in the in a minute on the positive thing this is the, this probably a lot of my critiques is i like them for certain things and kind of don't like them obviously for certain things as well uh but just for example um when he discusses like robert e lee we have pretty much like kind of uh, uh like a really uh, pretty good like overview of his like career up to that point in, in his lifetime so it's just kind of weird having sort of a political narrative then followed by just like a, a mini biography of like a famous figure and stuff um, so like I said, just kind of structure wise, it is kind of weird. Um, and also the ordering of some of the chapters was odd. Uh, just for the example of Tom, I had the very last chapter is um, a, a, the book has covered, you know, the end, pretty much the end of the Civil War. Um, we even covered like the assassination of Lincoln and stuff. And then we have a chapter sort of uh, mostly on uh, the um, uh, prisoner of war camps uh, in both, both the North and the South. And it was just kind of... I don't know, it just felt like it ended really abruptly. Um, it just kind of seemed kind of tacked on to the end. There was like a tiny bit of closure uh, when he kind of weaves Claire Barton's narrative back into the uh, POW camps and stuff at the end uh, because she, she had a vignette uh, as well uh, in the middle of the book. Uh, however, like I said, there was this sort of, since that is the last chapter, there's almost no sort of like kind of summary overview kind of, you know, here's the point of the book. I don't know, but <laughs> yeah, in a lot of history books, there's sort of like that last chapter that kind of sums everything up and kind of just makes you feel like you got closure and stuff. And this one really didn't have that feeling. It was more like, oh, here's the book. Oh, here's a chapter on prison camps at the end. And it just felt like a little odd. But anyways, that's, I know that sounded really terrible. I just wanted like a five minute spiel about, you know, the structure of the book. And it really, it wasn't like that big of a deal. I just thought like kind of in a way it was kind of like a drawing read, just a little bit. Um, and my other critique of the book, what was my other critique of the book? Oh, uh, I talked about the structure. I probably, I had another ma major-ish one. Hmm, maybe it probably wasn't that big of a deal, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Oh, yes, okay, and this one's not, like, really that big of a thing either. Um, and in a way, it's, like, another one of those ones I like, kind of thought it was kind of good in a way. Um, uh, but anyways, what the author does, uh, what S.E. Gwynn does is, uh, from both sides, from both the North and South, particular in the sort of military narrative um, aspects, when he's covering an event or a campaign or something, and it's, for example, like, you know, if it's from the Union perspective, from like, you know, either Grant or uh, William Sherman's perspective, uh, you know, if the South is doing something good, it's, you know, it's all gloom and doom, no matter how, you know, good the overall war is going, which, you know, late 1864, early 1865, everyone knows, like, even like, Everyone in the South kind of knew, like, they were going to lose and stuff, and it was more just, like, a matter of time. It's more of, yeah, when, not if. Uh, but he kind of portrays it as, like, such gloom and doom. Like, it's, uh, you know, the, it's the end of the world, and the South is going to, like, when they do one thing right, and they're going to somehow turn everything around, and, you know, Washington, D.C. is going to get totally overrun and everything. And it just, it's, it's just so pessimistic. It's not even funny. And then the next chapter will be the same event from, you know, the uh, the Confederate side, and it's pretty much the same thing you know the union does one one thing right and then all of a sudden you know everyone's just ready to like you know lay down their arms and just go all defeatist and stuff and just surrender um so in a way it it's probably kind of realistic to how uh people um sort of perceive things uh especially um you know back in the 1800s and you know before that and everything like a lot of generals and like you know soldiers on the ground they would always sort of underestimate their own strength and overestimate the enemy's strength um especially if they were not like super aggressive like the aggressive type of generals and stuff so it's definitely like a thing that probably happened but it's just the way he wrote it kind of just like exaggerated it to like like beyond like normal proportions i think uh, so it was just kind of i don't want to say comical to read but it was just like like I said, you're reading the same event from two different perspectives and they're both just like, oh, it's it's terrible. It's like the worst thing that's like ever happened to us in five, the four years of fighting and stuff. So it, it just seemed kind of bizarre to read it. Uh, but like I said, it's probably partly realistic and just maybe a little bit exaggerated on a couple of counts. All right, so I just went on way too long about the two little nitpicky things that really weren't even that big a deal. Anyways, on to the good stuff. 
the main thing I did like is that it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't just a pure political military narrative. And a lot of the vignettes were really good. Um, and I learned a lot. Like I said, I've never, I've read a couple books on the Civil War. Kind of just like, just kind of brief overview ones. Never anything, you know, quite as specific as just like, for example, the last uh, year of the war. Um, but like a lot of the vignettes were really good. Really enjoyed like uh, a couple chapters on Clara Barton um, and sort of her efforts, you know, basically to help. Uh, the soldiers out and stuff, especially, you know, the wounded ones, uh, you know, uh, turning into, like, you know, uh, old, like, uh, towns and stuff, just, like, on the rail cars, and there'll be hundreds and thousands of them, you know, that need to be, like, have their, like, limbs amputated, they're just sick, coming down with fever, everything, pretty much how crazy that was, and, uh, pretty much sort of the relief effort, she kind of, uh, just took on her own initiative, and I like, had connections, kind of like, you know, in the State Department stuff, to get things done, I thought that was really cool. Um, a couple other uh, vignettes, uh, obviously, Robert E. Lee, uh, William Tecumseh Sherman, and uh, Ulysses S. Grant, obviously they have big um, portions of the book kind of dedicated to them since they're kind of the main uh, generals at this point in the war. Um, I did like how they po portrayed pretty much all of them as, or the author portrayed all of them as like real people. Like, uh, for example, Lee was not like some strange demigod, you know, literally like the reincarnation of the god of war of like old, just like, you know, walking on the earth and stuff. Like he was obviously um, a real person with, especially at this, at, uh, throughout most of this period of the war, um, he was fairly kind of pessimistic and kind of a realist, like understanding, like, you know, it was kind of over. He might not have come out and like said it directly like that, but the author does show like a lot of hints that, you know, um, that was pretty much how he was feeling kind of like that despondency. Um, he did bust a couple myths that I guess I just like fell prey to that I didn't realize. Like, for example, I always thought Ulysses S. Grant was just like a drunk, <laughs> like they're just like a non-stop alcoholic just like all the time. Um, but he definitely pr had some pretty good uh, source material kind of proving that there's only a few occasions where he actually did get like drunk while he was um, a commander uh, during the Civil War, which I thought was really interesting. And also looking at like, um, it's kind of interesting showing uh, the... Oh, the previous lives of, like, for example, Ulysses S. Grant and William Tecumseh Sherman, how, like, they really weren't all that great, like, up until the Civil War. Um, it's kind of interesting to see how all these people get elevated uh, during this conflict, whereas before they are, you know, for sure down on their luck. Uh, most of them are actually pretty uh, poverty-stricken uh, before the war breaks out. Um, but like I said, just learned a couple really interesting things I didn't know about. Uh, for Also, for example... Uh, William Sherman uh, basically having like a mental breakdown uh, while he was a, a, a commander of a smaller force uh, in pre-Civil War era uh, United States. Just kind of very odd and just, like I said, just learning lots of different things that I had absolutely no idea about. So it's always really fun. Um, and like I said, also highlighting characters um, and generals and stuff that I didn't really know anything about. Uh, probably the most notable one off the top of my head uh, being the Confederate general like uh, John Mosby, who essentially just did like had like a giant guerrilla band like a sanctioned by the confederate army unlike i like, kind of like the uh gangs kind of like out in the midwest and stuff uh but anyways john mosby had a like a literal guerrilla band that just like went roving around like the union states the pretty much the entire war once um he was allowed to like legally do well i say legally do so i mean you know like i said sanctioned by like the confederate uh government to go out and pretty much just like go out there and raid which he did um with pretty much impunity for like two or three years, which is uh, really interesting because uh, I had never pretty much read about him and stuff. So, like I said, getting lots of highlights from people I didn't know about, lots of like non-political figures are all, or not, non, well, maybe not non-political, but uh, non-military figures um, are also highlighted in the book, which I really enjoy. Like I said, kind of a big overview of pretty much the entire like United States and Confederacy during 1864 through 1865. Um, really did like the uh, bibliography looked really good. I didn't know obviously a lot of the people and authors in there just because it's uh, Civil War history uh, but it seemed really thorough. Lots of lots of notes. Lots of footnotes in the book which I always really enjoy. One because it makes it you know it does make it look like it's you know a really well researched history book though sometimes that can be misleading uh, in a way uh, but reading some of the, his notes and stuff uh, really uh, were good where he was getting some of his information, uh, whether it's from secondary sources or primary source materials. So just thought it was really good. So yeah, overall, I really did enjoy this book. Uh, definitely a lot more positives than critiques. Most of my critiques were kind of pit nitpicky anyways. And like I said, overall, just the fact that um, I read through the book fairly quickly, 
uh, once I actually started it and like I said, not having any kind of like super bad, just like didn't want to pick it up at any point. Um, the pace kept going really good. Uh, you can definitely tell the author is, um, he's a really good popular historian in the sense that it, it is a popular history. Like it's meant for the general population, but you feel like you get a lot more out of it than like a regular popular history book. Um, but it's not academic or like, you know, quote unquote squat of scholarly scholarly. Um, I really, which I've read a lot of like, you know, scholarly monographs too. And I can tell you, they're not like the funnest books to read, um, ever. But like I said, it's got, it's kind of a good blend between, you know, scholarly and popular history. So that's definitely a plus, um, as well. And I can definitely see how he was shortlisted, uh, for a Pulitzer Prize. So yeah, overall, I'm going to give Hymns of the Republic by S.C. Gwynn four out of five stars. And I think if you enjoy, obviously, if you enjoy, like, the Civil War at all, your Civil War history buff, definitely pick this book up. You won't be disappointed. I think if you just enjoy, um, American history at all, you'll probably like it as well, because like I said, there's sort of vignettes, um, throughout the whole kind of, like, landscape of the United States and the Confederacy, not just sort of the military stuff going on. So yeah, overall, four out of five stars to Hymns of the Republic. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, let's see, do all my plugs, just like, comment, subscribe, you know, all that jazz, check out the Etsy shop, check out my Instagram, blah 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 you know, I gotta, I gotta really figure out, like, a good ending to my videos now, because I pretty much, like, forgot how to do this stuff, uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enj enjoyed the review, so, always remember, whatever you end up reading, read victoriously.